Hello everyone, welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Himbar. Today I'm doing my weekly update. This is the first one for the new year. This is the 6th of January, 2024. Uh, I'm looking really rough around the edges, I feel like, right now. Um, but here I am. Uh, I finished four books this week. Um, I had read most of them. Like, I was I was pretty much really close to finishing these by the time I recorded my last weekly update. But still, um, the first one I finished is Black Rain by Masuji Ibuse. It's kind of melancholy. It definitely questions, like, does God even exist in this context? Um, but it's also very beautiful. It's sublime, right? Um, it's uh, it's terrible. It, it's nauseating, actually, at times about the descriptions of some of these victims of the bombing of Hiroshima, the nuking of Hiroshima. But also other times where it's just like there's this, this weird tangent about nuts or fish, you know, or like, oh, we saw the nuke going off. There was a flower on the rock that I was crouching by, by the way. So stuff like that, right? So I mean, like, it, it's very uh, Japanese in that sense, I guess. Um, it's a, uh, well, this, <laughs> a major work of art is the quote, and it is a work of art, okay? This is just a great novel. And even though at times it's rather mundane, um, it's not an action novel by any means. It's a documentary novel. Um, it's very gripping. Uh, I very much enjoyed reading this. Um Another thing I finished, actually the next three things I finished, I don't have physical copies of, A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. Um, very fun time travel story around the same time as some other time travel stories like News from Nowhere or Looking Backward by Bill Amy. <clears throat> but um, very fun because it's Arthurian. And, uh, you know, you get this nice story, though. He, um, You get this romance uh, arc kind of thing going on. Um, but it's funny at the same time. But it's also very political it's insanely political, right? Uh, the Gatling gun, the bicycles just make it fun, right? Um, the taxes of King Arthur's kingdom, stuff like that. It's very fun. So um, I very much enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a hot minute since I read Twain, like a really long time. So um, very much enjoyed that. I'd like a physical copy. I'd like if I could get an old copy under, if I could add that to my antique book collection. Another one I read, which I should get a physical copy of, because this has... <clears throat> this collection is called Ship of Shadows, and the title story is Ship of Shadows, so I hadn't read it. Um, I finished that one last week, but I finished the collection this week. So I'd already read Belson Express, Ilmet and Linkmar, um, The Big Time, uh, what are the other ones? Oh, Gonna Roll the Bones, and then I read Ship of Shadows and Catch That Zeppelin for the first time here. They've all won Hugo Awards, besides, I think, Belson Express, but it won like a World Fantasy Award or something like that. And these also won like nebula awards and other things that they, these are all award-winning stories they're also later for the most part um library stories um besides the big time which came out in the 50s it's kind of like in the middle of his career i guess um they're pretty much later stories right so it just shows you how good library was for such a long time um but ship of shadows is basically it reminds me of book of the long sun in some ways there's also a literal blood drinking nazi with a like a throwing star that is a swastika <laughs> and that is just awesome i i like this story a lot it's also it has the themes of like revelation right uh i would say um um kind of in a sense of like uh the gurns bank continuum by william gibson kind of if you read that story um so uh of the things not being as they seem or as you imagined uh, it's kind of also going from superstition into knowledge um and then catch that zeppelin uh it's an exclamation point by the way um it's essentially there's a bunch of what ifs so it's like what if madame curie had married tom Edison? uh what if um the weimar republic was a bit better what if reconstruction in the united states was successful so basically by the time you get to the 1930s uh racism is just not really a thing in the united states uh germany has not become anti-semitic uh, or not nearly so, and that's been eradicated. Um, and Zeppelins, because there's no embargo, um, you know, uh, the hydrogen helium problem is not a thing, right? Hindenburg never happened. Um, stuff like that. So uh, like the KKK or Quash, for example, as well. And so it's interesting because the story starts in the 70s by a character named Fritz whose son's name is Justin, which is Fritz Leiber and Justin Leiber, by the way. Uh, but then he goes back, and now he's a bloke from Chicago, and he's half German, 
which is also like for Slyber because he's got a first and last name is German name. Um, they're German. And uh, he's from Chicago. Um, and uh, and uh, his name happens to be Adolf Hitler. Uh, so it's kind of this weird alternate reality, but it's also a more positive. Generally, when you see this alternate reality, his names are more negative. Um, so it's pretty cool uh, to see. Uh, you have a bunch of like Zeppelins flying around, for example, and they're like they find they're actually docking the Empire State Building, which never actually happened in reality, or at least the plans didn't go through uh, and stuff like that. It's really cool. Um, not a super. There's no action really in the story at all, um, and it's not. It doesn't come out of the gate and say it's Adolf Hitler, by the way. Um, it just is this weird interaction between this Jewish character um, and. Uh, he's like, you kind of look like Hitler. You probably don't want to walk around that. He's like confused because he's like blending into the different realities, essentially. Um, it does use an outdated term for black Americans. I don't even remember what the heck the term is now. Um, but I had never, I had never heard it when I read it. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that's talking about like African Americans or blacks. And so I looked it up. I was like, yeah, but it says now derogatory or something like that. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I've never heard that term in my life. Um, <clears throat> okay, and then the other story I read, so that's the third one, uh, was A Boy and His Dog by Harlan Ellison. I decided I wanted to read this uh, because I hadn't really read much of anything by Ellison, and David Wiley talks good things about him, um, and he's a firecracker. I, I like it when he wrote like an introduction or whatever in an anthology or something. Uh, one of my favorite quotes actually is by him, and it's him talking about Liber and how he was invited to a convention, and... Uh, he like he basically gets mad at all this the the so it's like a Star Trek convention, which makes sense, right? Maybe it's a sci-fi convention. It's in San Francisco, and he gets mad at him. He's basically it's like, I can't believe you guys invited me, and yet you have like one of the greatest, if not the greatest, science fiction writer of all time, like living down the street, and you didn't invite him. Um, and he's talking about Fritz Labor because he was living in San Francisco at the time. And I was like, I got mad respect for you, Ellison, <laughs> once he said that. Uh, so. Anyways, um, so A Boy and His Dog is very gruesome. It's a novella, uh, like Ship of Shadows is. Um, so it's very short, but it's post-apocalyptic. It actually takes place in 2024, which is one of the reasons I wanted to read this one specifically. Even though I finished it on December 31st, I didn't think I'd finish it that quickly. Um, but it's very dark. In fact, you could almost call it grim dark if it was fantasy, but it's post-apocalyptic sci-fi, like I said. Um, so like instead of like focusing on the space race, we focus on like robotics and like animal intelligence. So A Boy and His Dog is Vic is the boy and blood is the dog and the blood can talk to Vic and stuff like that. And it's kind of like Vic wants to have sex with girls normally by rape and blood wants food. And so that's basically the, the relationship, the companionship they got going there. It's very interesting. There's underground cities. They're very like Christian and like a fundamental way. Um, and uh, it's obvious inspiration for fallout in some ways too. So um yeah, no, I like that one. It was very dark, like I said, though. It's very dark, um, which I didn't like. But the story itself, I did enjoy. So um, other books I've read, um, I'm almost done. I'm hoping to finish this one this week, is Winter's in the World, because I only have Autumn left to go or Fall. Probably called Autumn here, I guess. Autumn, yeah. Okay. Uh, very much enjoying this. I want to make a video on it, because I decided that I should stop being afraid um, of making videos on like uh, more academic or scholarly stuff. And so the video probably wouldn't be very in-depth. I'd probably just mention it and say that you should read it. Um, but I think I'll make a video on it unless I get too scared. Um, hopefully I don't get too scared. Uh, and then I also read, I'm almost done with the Doom of Odin. I'll finish that one tomorrow. Um, and I read a little bit more of Arthur and Merlin. I'm liking the Doom of Odin a lot, actually. It, it's keeping me entertained at the way it's changing stuff up. I was not expecting. Uh, I didn't read any Weird Tales Modernity this week. Just didn't have time. Um, I am almost done with Sir Harrod and Mr. Fitz, which I also started this week. I'm not enjoying it. I think it would work better just for anyone who wants to get it. Um, split up the stories. Sometimes people suggest that with like Conan stories or Kane stories by Carl Edward Wagner. Split up the stories. They're essentially the same. In fact, that's actually my big problem. It's not even that they're essentially the same they're almost exactly the same and it's frustrating because the formula is kind of outdated anyways i think i'll talk about it in my review in several months so i also started a bunch of other stuff so um i think i well technically i had barely gotten into by force alone um last weekly update but i'm about halfway now really enjoying it very easy to read um 
and yeah, it's just enjoyable. Uh, the Arthur as gangster thing, in some ways it doesn't work for me, right? Like, I, in some ways, I feel like Arthuriana doesn't deserve respect, but I like the style it goes for. You could say it's full of crap in a lot of ways, but in, a real, in reality, like, it's this is kind of trying to come off as self-aware and funny, and while it is that, a lot of Arthuriana is too. Maybe not something like Lamar Arthur, which from my experience, I don't remember it being very self-aware, but something like Sir Gowan and the Green Knight is right like it's your complaint is wow these guys are jerks and they're sleeping with people well that's the point of the story you shouldn't be a jerk with unnecessary violence right the violence that has its impact and you shouldn't be sleeping with other people's wives right very self-aware right um but that being said i'll give tdr a pass because i like tdr and, and the story's funny there's been some parts so i'm just laughing so hard um I did barely start Cormier as well by Ed Greenwood and Jeff Grubb. I was like, man, I need to read more Forgotten Realms. And uh, I'll talk about this probably in my year in review, but uh, I didn't really focus on Forgotten Realms that much this year. I read like 11 Forgotten Realms books, which is the lowest amount I've read probably since uh, five years ago, maybe six, seven years ago, eight years ago, almost. Jeez. Um, So not very many. And I was like, I didn't read any series and that might have something to do with it. So I'm like, let's start a series. This is one of the thicker ones. It's like 500 pages, which is considerably bigger than most forgotten Realms novels, uh, but I'm enjoying it so far. And it's about Cormier, which is my favorite country. Um, and then I read Cervantes Don Quixote. I started it. I should say, cause I definitely didn't finish the whole thing. I'm 137 pages in. It's very thick. Um, I wanted to read this because I, I've known about it forever. I've, I've, I pretty much know the story and it's funny and it's cool. Um, it's making fun of romances, essentially. Maybe romances, I should clarify. Um, it's a little long, I feel like, though. That's probably going to be my complaint. That it, I don't know if it needs to be this long. We'll see. I've read other books from around this time period, and they're not as long. Um, at least, not generally. Um, but there's another book by Cervantes I want to read this year. So if anyone wants to read it with me, it's called uh, The Perils of Persilis and Sigismunda. Um which he finished like right before he died. And so it was published after he died. And uh, that's actually kind of a reverse direction from Don Quixote. It's a, uh, it's more fantastic. And it kind of looks at what Cervantes would have thought of Northern Europe at the time of his life in early modern period, where the biggest country in Europe was the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth of all things. Um, and so I'm interested because I think that, Lithuanian history is a little interesting. Did you guys know that they converted to Christianity in like the 15th century? That's insanely late. Um, it might it might have been 16th century. I think it's 15th century though. Um, yeah. Anyways, so and they were while they're one of the smallest countries in Europe now, they were one of the biggest um, and one of the strongest at, at a certain time in, in history. Um, and then the other oh my goodness, I read so much this week. I barely started Parasite by Steve Diamond. I'm like what started it today. 50 pages in, though. I'm really enjoying it. It's a really easy, fast read, of course. Um, kind of like a thriller, but horror. Lots of blood. Um, and then um, the oh, the other one I read, I'm trying to end this, guys, uh, is The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. I have one more story left in this, so I'll also finish this one tomorrow. But uh, uh, very good. I'm, I'm loving it. It may make my top 10 for 2024, and it's been the first week of January, so... Yeah, The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. Mm, awesome. Uh, I I wanted to read it because, again, David Wiley suggested it a while ago. And then I, when I realized that There Will Come Soft Rains is in The Martian Chronicles, and I had read that in middle school, and it left such an impact on me that I remember it very particularly. I read two sci-fi stories I remember very strictly, like very clearly in my mind. It was there, come, there Will Come Soft Rains and Flowers from Algernon. I read those both in middle school um for some english class uh yeah so great stuff um i think that's really all i've read though this week <laughs> oh i've i'm almost done with the magician's nephew uh, with my girls hopefully i'll have that finished by next week and then we'll see what we start afterwards i did read the moon is green by fritz Leiber as well that's a short story i think it came out in like 52 53 51 50 sounds right about right somewhere around there um those amazing years where he wrote so many good stories somehow came out after poor superman i think um which is another great story but uh the moon is green is kind of uh one of his feminist stories um it's 
radiation has taken over. And so this woman is held in her house unrealistically by her husband. And so basically she's driven mad. And it's not to say that it basically Liber is saying women aren't crazy, you know, uh, maybe they sometimes act crazy because men treat them like, you know, they're, well, they're not human in some ways, right? Um, not as intelligent as men. So um, it's, yeah, like I said, it's one of those more feminist works, um, which is cool to read. And it's an, it's an interesting story. Um, and then I also put a poem up on Patreon, if you want to read that. Uh, that reminds me, I need to go grab a poem I put in my pocket of my pants that are in the dirty clothes so I doesn't get washed and maybe upload a different poem as well, too. So if you want to read a poem, um, it's about uh, winter and nuclear winter. Um, and go subscribe to the Patreon. Um, I don't advertise that ever. I, I feel bad advertising myself. Um, but yeah, there's been some good reading, uh, good stuff. I I hopefully will make more prog uh, progress in some of these books. I have a huge stack of books next to me, you know, that I want to read. Right, like I have this one, and I have this one and I have this one and 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 there's more <laughs> that I didn't pick up and so I just yeah those are the books that I want to get to soon right and so who knows when any of that will actually happen but anyways uh video is too long I apologize um what have y'all been up to this week um hopefully I will yeah, I want to read more indie stuff this year, too. I kind of slacked on it last year. Well, that's not true. I did okay with my indies. I don't really talk about it much, but I did okay, I guess. But I do want to read more. <laughs> so, anyways, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>